During the year of 2020 leading up to this year 2021, like most persons, I have found myself having to spend a lot of time at home, which actually led me to start this YouTube channel. Now, since I spend countless hours of my week working at my desk, whether editing client photos or editing my YouTube videos in this spare bedroom that I'm using as an office and a YouTube filming space, I have put a lot of thought into designing my ideal setup where I can not only be productive, but also stay inspired. And if you've followed the channel since its inception, you might have seen the changes I made to the setup or some of my desk setup photos I posted over on my Instagram page as I've tried documenting the changes and progress in my journey. Now, today, I want to share a bit more about this workspace and how I've gradually improved it explaining my thought behind it all hey what's going on everybody dre here and this is my desktop setup in 2021 first off i want to preface this video with that i am incredibly fortunate and grateful to be in this position that i am to be able to afford all of this i have worked very hard to get to this point and have accumulated these products over many years and months which i have bought with my own hard earned money whether brand new or used with that said i'll try to leave links to each item i speak about in this video for you guys to check out if you're interested in learning more down in the description box below now let's go over all the products in this setup and since it's a desktop setup video i think it's only right that we start by talking about the desk so the desk that i'm using is a height adjustable sit stand desk from a company called xdesk and this is their generation one terra version which has a dark bamboo surface of around 60 inches by 32 inches with a black aluminum brush finish frame. This desk is really well built and is extremely solid which has a weight capacity of just over 300 pounds with great stability and holds everything on my desk quite well. As mentioned, this is a sit-stand desk and there are buttons that you can press to adjust the height from a sitting to standing position or vice versa. Now this desk can go to a maximum height of 50.8 inches to a minimum of about 20 inches. There are also buttons that you can use as presets for your preferred standing and sitting height. The motors are relatively silent, not the quietest I've heard but definitely won't be super annoying. There are a lot of different options that you can choose to further customize the desk to your liking, which can be pretty pricey. This standing desk however has been a real game changer for me because working at my desk may sometimes require me to be on the computer for long hours and sitting for long hours inevitably leads to a lot of back fatigue but now when I get tired I can continue working while standing. Overall I love this desk, the solid wood surface, its easy height adjustability all goes into why I would definitely recommend this desk to anyone who is in the market and has the budget for a high quality motorized height adjustable desk. This particular version isn't available anymore but you'll definitely be able to get the newer version on their website. After a period of heavy use, this desk has picked up quite a few scratches and as much as how it hurts to cover up the beautiful finish on my desk, I had to get an extra large mouse pad to prevent further scratches. The mouse pad that I picked up is from Amazon and it's a relatively cheap mouse pad that was big enough to cover the majority of my desk. I'll leave a link to this mouse pad in the description box below if you're interested in picking up one yourself. I also have another mouse pad on the desk which is a smaller RGB mouse pad. It's definitely not necessary but I love a little splash of RGB here and there and this one is also from Amazon. The RGB on this is quite nice but I have to warn you this mouse pad is pretty hard to clean when it gets dirty. I don't know, I guess it's because of its material. Let's move on to the main centerpiece of the desk and that's the monitor. Now this beast of a monitor is the 38 inch ultra wide monitor from Dell. And this is perhaps my favorite piece of the entire setup. Now I could make an entire video on this monitor, comment below if you'd like to see that, but 
just to keep it short, this is the Dell U3818 DW and its display is a curved 37.5 inch 60 hertz IPS panel with a 3840 by 1600 resolution which is a similar PPI to a 27 inch 1440p monitor. So sharpness is definitely not an issue here. Its typical brightness is about 300 nits, which is plenty bright for indoor situations. The display also has a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 and has a 178 degree viewing angle. Now, the panel covers 99% of the sRGB color gamut and 78% of the DCI-P3 color space. So it's definitely color accurate and plenty good for my photo and video editing needs. Having this much screen real estate for multitasking is what I love about an ultra wide monitor. Even editing videos and being able to see a lot of my timeline is just a game changer for me. Initially, I was in the market for a 34 inch monitor but a friend suggested that I try the 38 inch instead and that has really turned out to be the best decision I have made. 38 inches is just a sweet spot for me when it comes on to the amount of screen real estate I'll need. The monitor has built in dual 9 watt speakers and surprisingly it sounds really really good. Not the greatest sounding speakers but very respectable and I'm sure many will find it good enough to get by. The monitor comes with a pretty solid stand but as you can see I decided to ditch the stand and instead decided to use a monitor arm to mount the monitor on my desk just to give off a floating type of effect. Now the monitor arm that I'm using is from a brand called Wally which I also picked up from Amazon. The version I got is not really meant to hold a monitor of this size, but I had it using with an old monitor I had and decided to use it temporarily with my current setup, but definitely will be upgrading this pretty soon. For now, it gets the job done. Below my monitor is one of my most recent additions to the desk setup and it's this beautiful walnut desk shelf from Grovemade. This desk shelf helps to provide more functionality to my desk by creating more space where I can either store or hide certain things. I also use it as a speaker stand to elevate the speakers to a higher level closer to my ears. Overall, I absolutely love this new piece of addition to the desk. It's not only pleasing to the eye, but as you can see, it provides a lot of functionality to help lessen any clutter on my desk. This is not a sponsored ad by any means, but Grovemade also makes other high quality desk accessories that I would love to add to the setup in the future. Now, moving on to what is essentially the brains of this entire setup. Here we have my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has an A core Intel i9 processor. And by the way, that once sounded awesome when I got it, which was before those Apple M1 chips dropped on the market. The laptop has a 8GB AMD Radeon Pro 5500M graphics card, 1TB of flash storage and 16GB of RAM. I opted for a laptop because of the combination of power and portability. It has enough power to handle my video and photo editing workflow and I can also have it with me when I'm on the go. The main reason for using a Mac is simply because I use Final Cut Pro for my video editing and because I'm also into that Apple ecosystem at this point. Now the laptop dock that I'm using is another budget option that I picked up from Amazon. I chose it because it matches the color scheme of my laptop and it's built really sturdy and it's adjustable as well. The brand is called Omotan. Now anyone with a Mac will know that it only comes with USB Type-C ports. So you have to embrace that dongle life or buy lots of adapters. But what I like about these USB-C ports and what makes them really powerful is that they also support Thunderbolt 3, which can support data through port four times that of USB Type-C at 40 gigabits per second. And so for me, the solution is this Thunderbolt dock by CalDigit. This is a TS3 Plus and using it, I get 15 ports from just one Thunderbolt cable coming from my laptop. So this is what pretty much connects all my peripherals, including my monitor. This dock also provides 87 watts to help power my laptop, which is a little lower than what my 16 inch laptop requires but I have not had any issues using it at all until now. This one cable solution is not only elegant and clean but also very convenient because now when I want to unplug my laptop and go I just disconnect one cable and I don't have to mess around with any dongle or tangled mess of cables. 
Now, moving on to the peripherals, my keyboard of choice is the MX Keys from Logitech, and it's just the perfect keyboard that provides great aesthetics, it's minimal, and most importantly, it's wireless, which is a must-have criteria for most of my peripherals just to really keep the desk free of cables. The backlight feature on the MX Keys is perhaps one of my favorite feature as it will detect when your hands are near to light up and turns off when you're away from the keyboard. It's also capable of connecting up to three different devices. So the functionality is definitely awesome. The mouse of choice to pair with the MX Keys is the MX Master 3, which is also from Logitech. And this for me was a no brainer. The ergonomics of the MX Master 3 is by far its biggest strength coupled with all its functionality. This mouse just makes it a brilliant experience and the perfect combo in my opinion. I did a review on both the MX Keys and the MX Master 3 so you can definitely go and check that video out if you want to learn more. Moving on to the speakers and these are the Razer Nomos speakers and these sound great. Definitely an upgrade from my monitor's built-in speakers. These speakers not just only sound great, but it looks pretty sleek as well. I think it complements the entire setup and the fact that it has RGB lights at the bottom is just a bonus. One minor drawback to these speakers though is that there are no compatible apps or software for Mac computers that will allow you to customize things like setting a specific color for the RGB lights. So as you can see here, the lights will just continue to cycle through to different colors. Now, when I'm editing videos and I want to really zone in on audio, I use my noise cancelling headphones and my go-to for this purpose is my Sony WH-1000XM2s. Yes, I'm still using the older generation tools from Sony and the truth is, even though I've been tempted to upgrade to the XM4s, my XM2s still works really well for pretty much all I need. I'm still getting great audio quality, still has very impressive noise cancellation and they still look great. When I just need to give my ears a little breather from the over-the-ear headphones, I pull for my Apple AirPods Pro. These tiny AirPods not only pair with my MacBook Pro seamlessly and have good sound quality, but it also has good noise cancellation and an amazing transparency mode so you'll be able to hear more of your surroundings. The headphone stand that I use for my Sony XM2s is this sleek looking USB hub headset stand from Tilted Nation. Again, this really complements the entire setup and keeps with the theme of my aesthetics. The stand also comes with a mouse bungee if you have a wired mouse and of course some RGB lights to add some color to the setup. As a photographer, when it comes on to editing hundreds of client photos, using a mouse can be very harmful to your wrist in the long run and one of the best tools that not only helped to minimize that effect but also helped to speed up my editing is this graphic tablet that I use and this one is from XP Pen. This is the XP Pen Star 06 wireless graphic tablet and this was a total game changer for me for photo editing. There are a number of customizable buttons you can use to set and switch between different tools that you'll use frequently in programs like Photoshop. And the pen, it comes with extra tips that you can swap out when needed. I highly suggest you getting yourself a graphic tablet. If you're in the field of photo editing, if you're a designer or even an artist, this tool really made the world of a difference for me and I'm sure it will do for you too. Now, this desk setup would not have been completed without talking about one of the most important part of this setup, and that's the chair. The chair that I'm using is from Autonomous, and this is their Ergo Chair 2. And this is perhaps one of the best investments I've made. I really love this chair. For the price point, you get awesome ergonomics, a crazy amount of adjustability, and a beautiful aesthetic design. I actually did a review on this chair, which I will leave a link to in the description box below if you want to learn more. All in all, an awesome chair for its price point. One important aspect of having your desk set up looking and feeling clean is to ensure your cables from all your devices are managed well. And for me, I definitely had to spend some time doing some proper cable management. Luckily, my desk came with a cable raceway to the back, so that for sure really made it easy for me to get my cables off the floor, organized and tucked away neatly. This can be a very time consuming and difficult task, but I highly suggest that you spend the time and get it done right. At the end of the day, the result will be very satisfying. 
And the last item that's on the desk and a part of this entire desk setup is this wireless charger that I found on Amazon. There's nothing special here. I really just use it to charge my iPhone or my earpods when they need some topping up. Now, moving away from the desk and looking at the rest of the space, right above my monitor on the wall are pieces of wall art that I picked up online from a company called Displate. These wall arts are like metal plates that magnetically stick to the wall so that I wouldn't have to drill holes and leave permanent marks in the case I decide I needed to change the setup in the future. They have a matte finish to them and the quality is really good given the fact that these were printed on metal. I decided to go with these three art pieces as they bring a form of motivation and inspiration which is what I wanted for my space as a reminder to keep going and always aim for greatness no matter what. I also decided to frame these art pieces using sound foam panels as a form of sound treatment for this space which is useful for when I'm doing my voiceovers and filming my YouTube videos. Another important piece of this setup is lighting and as you can see I have quite a few lights in my setup. The light that's lighting the wall are the Govi Flow Pro light bars and these are mounted on the back of my monitor. These are of course RGB lights and they give the wall and the setup in general some injection of color and character. The light that's mounted on the back of the desk is just a cheap RGB light strip that I picked up from Amazon some time ago and decided to add to the setup. On the little shelf stand to the right is another unique light that I found again from Amazon which has a nice walnut finish to it that turns on using these magnetic balls and it just really complements the dark wall and just give the setup an earthy feel. Behind that light, I have a fake plant just in the corner, which you will also see I have strategically added a few smaller plants around the entire setup as I really wanted elements of wood, metal, stone and greenery so that even though the environment that I work in is very tech oriented, you still get a sense of nature while you're in it. And I think my setup achieves this really well. Now, there's an old proverb that says, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, which really goes to say, sometimes we all have to take a little break from work. And for me, when I just need to take a quick breather, as a bonus, I started creating a mini gaming setup, which I'm experimenting with at the moment which is centered pretty much around the PS5. Now here I just have my PS5 connected to this cheap HP 1080p monitor for when I need to just unwind and play a little Call of Duty, Call of War or whatever game I feel like at the time. I have my two PS5 DualSense controllers docked to the right to keep them charged up and ready for when I need them and my PlayStation lights at the bottom of the monitor as well. This shelf unit that I have the setup in is just a cheap shelving unit that I bought and put together from a local furniture store in my area. Nothing special. Here you'll see I have all my lenses, my camera, my drone and some RGB lights on the back all just to give this setup some vibe. As I said, I just started this project and would love to upgrade the monitor to maximize and make use of the true potential of the PS5, maybe some audio solution to go with it as well. You can comment below and let me know some of your suggestions on what I can do for this setup. So that's essentially it. I think a desk setup is not just a collection of gadgets that you show off and flex. Well, at least certainly not for me. I think this desk setup signifies my journey and evolution as a tech enthusiast and a content creator as my skills have certainly been improved over the years and to complement those improved skills, I have built up this collection of tools to better enhance and nurture my ability to create content. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this desk setup tour and that wherever in the world you may be, you got some ideas for your own desk setup as well. If you enjoyed this video, please ensure to drop a like on it and share it with your friends. That'll be of a massive help. If you want to also support the channel and to see similar content, you can also consider subscribing as I seek to grow this YouTube community. That'll be it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.